Today I'm going to cover my recommended modifications before taking your automatic 350Z out to the racetrack. So as you look through all of the forums and across different YouTube videos, everyone is going to shit on the automatic for these cars. For whatever reason, everyone just thinks it's super fun to shit all over automatic. And while yes, manuals are more involving and a little bit more fun to drive, but the automatic on these cars work great on track. I have had zero issues with it. And here are the things that I recommend so that you won't have any issues either. If you do nothing else, you must change the fluid. You cannot just use regular part store ATF. It's just not going to work at the higher temperatures you're gonna see on track. It's gonna to start to foam. It's gonna to start to varnish. It's not going to work properly and keep the transmission lubricated. And your transmission is going to destroy itself because the fluid's not gonna work properly in those high load applications. So I recommend switching either to a red line ATF or the royal purple ATF. Those are the two that I have have experience with there are others out there so use whatever high performance synthetic ATF that you prefer but you're going to need to change it out because as those temperatures start to get higher those ATFs are going to continue working properly and keep your transmission running instead of just falling apart and turning into foam and ruining your transmission now if you're gonna get a little bit more involved you're gonna go the more than just a couple track days you're gonna start pushing it a little harder for a little bit longer step number two transmission cooler. These cars do come with an automatic transmission cooler from the factory. It's very similar to the one on my E39 BMW. It's using a liquid to liquid cooler by running automatic transmission fluid through a thin tube inside the radiator and it's transmitting all that heat from the automatic transmission fluid to the coolant and then letting the radiator cool all that coolant off. And while it does a decent job, eventually it will be overwhelmed by track use. So you're going to want to add a supplemental cooler out in front of the radiator, similar to an oil cooler. If you look over on the passenger side of your car, you'll see two different hard lines transitioning to rubber lines that then go into the radiator. The one on the passenger side goes straight into the radiator. The one that is on the driver side of the two comes further down the driver side of the radiator and then plugs in. To add the transmission cooler, what you're going to need to do is basically go in between one of those lines. One of the lines that's going to the radiator, you're going to disconnect it and instead run it to your supplemental cooler. Then run your supplemental cooler back to the barb on the radiator. So it's just going to go in between the transmission and the extra cooler in the radiator and you're going to add some supplemental cooling on top of that. It doesn't matter which hose you use or how you route it because the ATF is being pumped through the lines by the transmission. So you can put it on either side. It's still going to cool it off. It's still going to help keep the transmission cool. If you switch to an aftermarket radiator, you're not going to have any sort of barbs for the transmission cooler. So you'll need an even bigger transmission cooler to compensate for that loss of the one in the radiator. On the left, the smaller of my two coolers is the oil cooler and the one on the right Right, the larger one is the transmission cooler. Because I'm running an aftermarket radiator, this is all that's keeping my transmission cool. And I can run at 215, 220 degrees for the entire 30 minute session without issue. I'm gonna do a DIY on exactly how to install this on the car and what parts you're gonna need. You can get it done for just over $30. So it's really not a lot of money, but it will keep your transmission alive on track. And it's not that difficult of an install either. So now that you have better fluid in your transmission and you're able to keep it cool with that extra cooler it would be a good idea to maybe keep an eye on temperatures with a gauge while you should be safe with the extra cooler and the better fluid it's still a good idea just to make sure there's not something going wrong and maybe it's a particularly hot day and it's getting too hot or maybe it's a cold day outside and you're driving to work and you notice you're not getting up to temperature on your transmission so maybe you're going to need a block off plate for daily driving i've had a glow shift gauge in the car since 2015 so it's lasted three and a half years now with zero issues Issues. and it has definitely saved my transmission more than once of where it was a particularly hot day or I was pushing particularly hard and the car was getting up in temperature and once I was getting up to the 225 230 degree range I decided I'm just gonna take a cool down lap it's not worth losing a transmission just to keep going hard the wiring on these is pretty much standard across the board you're gonna have a power you're gonna have a switch 12 volt you're going to have a ground and you also might have a dimmer for when you turn the lights on it's a little bit difficult to see with the under tray but right where that 
that orange area is, that is where the temperature probe goes into the transmission pan. I would highly recommend buying a bung that you can weld in place instead of trying to tap the pan. It's just not thick enough to get a good tap on it, so it was very difficult for me to get it to seal. But once I did get it to seal, it's been perfect for the three years I've had the gauge. Obviously, it would be ideal to do the gauge, the new fluid, and the transmission core all at the same time so you could drain all the fluid out of the system, drop the oil pan so you can install the temperature probe, go ahead while everything's drained put on the cooler so you're not making a mess up in front of a car, and then when everything's buttoned back up you can put in the new fluid. So it's definitely more cost and time effective to just do all three at the same time, especially considering it's going to come out to way less than $200. And the last thing you can do before taking your automatic 350Z to the track is to improve the shifter a little bit. While this isn't going to make the car shift faster or really change anything from a performance standpoint, it can just make it a little bit more enjoyable. I think it makes a lot more sense to pull back the upshift than to push forward. So I'm going to link an earlier video I did showing you how to switch that so that it does a more proper pull back for upshift, push forward for downshift. It just makes sense for what G's are happening to the car while you're actually doing that. When you're braking and you're downshifting, you're leaning forward so you're pushing the shifter forward when you're accelerating the car is pulling you back in your seat which is the direction you're going to pull the shifter and then if you like you can also change out your shifter there's not really a lot of good options out on the market for an automatic 350z shifter you're kind of stuck with the stock unit or trying to apply some sort of universal setup that never really works that well so i'm going to start offering these for sale so if anyone's interested just message me on instagram or shoot me an email well yours doesn't have to be quite as tall as mine is the reason mine is this tall is so that it's right in line with where my hand is going to be on the steering wheel so it makes it a lot quicker to go from steering wheel pull back up shift hand back to the wheel so I have two hands on the wheel as often as possible. I also think it's a lot more attractive looking than the stock piece which just looks like it belongs in a Nissan Maxima. The transmission core is going to cost you about $35. The transmission temperature gauge is $70 and depending on which synthetic fluid you decide to go with you're going to be spending between $40 and $60. And if you try to do some sort of shifter it could be anywhere from $20 to $50. But with all that you should have a car that is much more enjoyable to drive and you're going to be able to drive all the sessions from start to finish without worrying about your transmission. One little recommendation, and you all have probably figured this out, but the key to getting good quick shifts out of his transmission is to just pull it in anticipation of when you want it to shift. The time from you pulling the lever to the time it actually shifting is definitely too long, but the amount of time it actually takes to shift gears is not that long at all. So for my car, I know that when it's at about 6,800 RPM, I just pull the lever back, and by the time I get to red line at 7,200, it changes. So as long as you learn the car you learn to anticipate when you're going to need to shift and you turn what speeds you can be at to downshift when you're braking you just learn in the braking zones where the car will allow you to downshift it's very easy to get good quick clean shifts out of the car you just have to work with it you can't treat it like it's a dual clutch it's going to take a little bit of time but once you master it it works extremely well if you have any questions drop them in the comments below hit that subscribe button and i will see you guys next week